Welcome Dungeon Crawlers to this very short tutorial about occluders in the Legend of Grimrock Ancient. I'm quickly going to go over uh, what occluders are, why they are important when we are creating models and stuff for the Grimrock Ancient, and how we can actually see uh, what they're doing behind the curtain. So let's just get right to it. I'm going to use this town uh, to test occluders and uh, use it to demonstrate what they are to you. So, occlusion. What, what occlusion uh, really is, is just a way for the engine to determine uh, what is visible and what is not visible. And it uses that information uh, to decide if something should be rendered or if something should not be rendered. For example, uh, when I step into the tavern and uh, go up to this wall, this wall over here, it, it has the occluder class and a occlusion model, meaning that everything that is behind this wall is not being rendered. So if we look at the definition of the wall, this is the uh, this is the definition of the wall. You can see that it has uh, an occluder model and it has a, a model that is the wall. So there are two models uh, playing together here. If you look at the wall model, this is the model of the wall. It's a simple plane that uh, defines the wall and there are some uh, stone uh, trimmings on the top of the uh, top of the model. So if we look at that in engine, you can see the wall and the stone, stone trimming at uh, the top but uh, in the definition we are also pointing towards a model for the occluder and if we look at that model that's a simple plane it's just a extremely simple model that is the exact same size of the wall so in engine there is a model here that never gets rendered it's simply being used to determine visibility to determine if something on the other side is visible or not. So, how can we how can we see it? How can we see what uh, the engine is doing behind the curtain? Well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this white uh, plaster texture here and I'm going to turn it completely translucent. Of course, uh, this wall has another texture on the other side, and I'm not going to mess with that. I'm going to leave that uh, the way it is. So I've already prepared that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to use a material overwrite to overwrite the white uh, plaster texture of the inner wall and I'm going to turn it completely translucent with a texture called SX translucent. And if you're wondering what this is, this is a simple material definition uh, that's pointing towards something that already exists within Legends of Grimrock, which is a texture called Black Translucent. This is a texture that's completely invisible, uh, so if you de define a material that points towards this texture, where you have Alpha Test True and Blend Mode Translucent, you have uh, created something that you can use to turn stuff uh, invisible. So, uh, let's do that. Let's go back to the objects and let's turn this on. So now my translucent texture is going to override the white plaster texture of the inner walls. I'm also going to do that uh, with another asset that's the same wall simply used for elevation. So uh, in engine I have this wall at the bottom but there are other walls also at the top and I'm going to turn both of these inner wall textures translucent. But I'm going to turn off the occluder model for now, just so that we can see uh, how stuff works with occluders and without occluders. So let's turn this off for now and reset the, uh, the dungeon. Press play. So now when we step into the tavern, uh, we can see through the walls. And we can see that everything on the outside is still being rendered. Uh, the tree is being rendered, uh, the f particle effects of the falling leaves are being calculated, and so forth. So, uh, 
this is what basically goes on when people uh, do not use occlusion uh, on their models. So let's turn them back on. <laughs> let's go back to uh, the definition and let's turn them back on. Here we go. Save this and refresh the dungeon or the town. <laughs> more accurately the town so now when I step into the tavern you can see that everything on the outside is not being rendered anymore the tree is not being rendered the particle effects is not being calculated and this is really the benefit of occlusion uh, it's giving us some performance boost when we step into isolated areas uh, areas that you can block off from the from the rest of the world and you can see that basically the rest of the town is not getting rendered when I'm inside the tavern because it's not visible uh, to the party uh, of course like you can see here the tree is being rendered but when I step close to the wall it stops being rendered the reason is that I have yet to create a occlusion model uh, for the roof so the roof uh, is an object that does not have occlusion therefore when I'm here it's determining that the tree is completely uh, un uh, invisible to the body but when I step back the the model that calculates the occlusion it's the same size as the wall so the uppermost part part of the tree gets visible through the model of the roof this is a good example of what happens when not all your objects are using uh, occluders. So, and that's also the reason why the tower <coughs> is being rendered here, because uh, if a line trace from the party does not hit an occluder here, uh, the engine is saying yes, this is uh, this is visible to the party, and therefore needs to be rendered. Same thing with the upper part of uh, this house over here same thing with the trees uh, that resides here because I can see the uppermost part of the tree through the roof uh, it's also important to note that uh, occlusion is not only happening to models like you saw with uh, the particle effects of the tree the same applies to monsters and, and stuff like that for example if I place a monster here on, on this side of the wall Let's just turn off its brain, so it's uh, not going to do something, it's not going to mess with something. Open the door here. Now you can see that the monster is uh, in this alleyway between the houses, but uh, as soon as the as soon as we stop seeing uh, the, the monster, and it's uh, behind an object that has a clue enabled, the engine stops rendering it. And this angle is really good to see exactly the benefits so you know as soon as I step uh, outside of the tavern uh, the, 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 the town basically all starts to get rendered and pops in and when I step inside the tavern the, the we are you know gaining some performance by not uh, rendering these objects and this is something that is just it's just good practice. Always be thinking about uh, visibility and always be thinking about when you're designing something. Uh, does not necessarily have to be a Grimrock dungeon. This is just uh, game design one on one that uh, if you can optimize by, uh, by using tricks like occlusion and, and stuff like that, you should do it. A good example is uh, how this town is designed that if we go back here where the the harbor is this wall here this stone wall its sole purpose is basically to stop visibility and and this is a a old trick that you can uh, see in many first person shooters uh, other games that are using uh, this rendering technique is that you create these kind of C corridors just to block the vision so that when the player or when the party is uh, 
you know, looking through this uh, doorway, the whole town does not c need to be rendered. It's not until I stepped over here that it starts rendering all the town. And the same goes for that, uh, if I'm looking in this direction, I'm not rendering uh, the harbor. So the stuff that's over here is not being rendered when the party is on the other side of the wall. So uh, this is how you optimize your levels. This is how you optimize uh, your design. Uh, is seclusion always perfect in Grimrock? Uh, no. Uh, there are some uh, there are some minor uh, uh, inconsistencies with the uh, line trace, and I will show you an example, or not inconsistencies, just not 100% accurate. So if we go into this library, <coughs> wow, that was a really loud chain. Uh, let's put that on. <laughs> let's put that on the fix list. Uh, let's go up to the balcony here. And let's let's look at a case where occlusion can create a visual glitch or, or oh yeah, like a pop in. So uh, the floors that the the party is standing on, they have occluder enabled, meaning that when I'm on this floor of the library, uh, everything beneath me is not getting rendered. And of course, that's a huge optimization because. I don't want all this stuff to be rendered when it's completely not visible to the party when it's on the third floor. So, uh, but this floor has occlusion, but this tile here at the very end does not. So, I'm going to show you why I created a object that has no no occluder or, or the occlusion is disabled. So, in order for you to see that, let's just move this, uh, move this away. And I'm going to take a tile that has occlusion. And now I have placed a tile here that has an occlusion. Let's refresh the dungeon. And of course, get dropped to the bottom. And walk back up to the balcony. Now we are back at the balcony. And now you can see what's going on. There's a wall being occluded, therefore not being rendered, <coughs> at the the backside of this tile. That's because the line trace or the the trace that happens, the line of sight trace, is is determining that the wall is not visible, even though it is. So the line trace is hitting this floor object over here, and it's determining that the wall behind is not visible to the party, and therefore it stops rendering it but I can still see the uppermost part of the wall. So this is creating a, a visual glitch. And when I step more closer, now it says, yeah, the party can see the wall. We need to, we need to render it. So during this time, I am getting a visual glitch where something is being occluded, even though it shouldn't be. So in order to fix that, uh, the tile here at the very end, because th this is really the tile that's causing it, uh, the line of trace is hitting the floor and is determining it's not to be visible. So uh, that's the reason why w uh, I needed to create a, a single object that uh, does not have occlusion. So now that we have replaced that tile back on the balcony, Let's take a look at it again. And now you can see we are not seeing this uh, we are not seeing this glitch and it's simply because the line of the line trace is going through the floor now. It's not hitting an an model that is defined as an occluder model. So the line of trace is going through and it's hitting the wall so the wall is determined to be visible and therefore needs to be rendered uh, in all these uh, on all these tiles from all these point of view points of views. So well, let's <laughs> drop down here and go back to the uh, go back to the tavern. Uh, I really hope that this has given you an insight into uh, 
occlusion, uh, how we basically use them, uh, what are the benefits. The benefits should be clear. I mean, you are saving up, uh, saving up rendering time. You're saving up some, you know, giving the engine, you know, less to do. Uh, therefore, you can optimize uh, some spaces uh, by using occlusion and. For example, <coughs> this door over here, since this is a dynamic object, it does not have an occluder, uh, meaning that if I would, uh, if I would, uh, like, uh, define an occluder on this door, uh, it would not be part of the animation. So when I open the door, everything, uh, everything inside the tavern would would not be rendered, and then when I would step through all the tavern would just pop into existence so it's not a good idea to place occlusion on uh, object that needs to move or, or for example these doors but we use them on basically anything that's static you know we we, we want to use them on the pillars we want to use them on the walls but we also want to have the models simple because uh, occlusion or the calculation of you know occlusion that's all that's also something that the engine needs to do and that also uh, has an overhead so for example if i were to create an uh, object that was really complex and and use that as an uh, occluder model if it, if it would have many faces and so forth the the, the occlusion calculation itself uh, can become something that uh, is heavier than the benefit of the object that is simply being being blocked. So this is a this is something to to keep in mind. Keep the occlusion models really simple. Try to keep the uh, line traces really clean, and uh, and try to think about you know spaces that you need to optimize and think about uh, how you design your levels so that you're taking uh, you're, you're trying to create the, the best experience for the player so that's it for now I hope this was informative for you keep creating those dungeons because I love to play them so yeah thank you bye bye for now